Hi, uh, so um, this is just uh, another part to the video. Uh, I think uh, I've maybe possibly thought about how to, uh, while I was working out, how to fix this. So possibly we can change vertex to string. We'll just test it out. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, so what I did was change T val to string val, and here I'll change T val to string val in the constructor too. It might work. We'll try it. Uh, hopefully it does. Then here we'll say string get val. Here we'll say string val. What's wrong with that? Okay, so in our, in our array we're going to change it to... Does that work now? Generic. How is that generic? Change vertex. Type string, string. Vertex, string, string. Then we're here, we're changing vertex of type string, vertex array. Vertex array. Points a new vertex of type string. How is that generic though? So what's wrong with that then? Vertex array points a new vertex of type string. Uh, default capacity. Any suggestions here? Is that going to work? So I just, I just hit run just to see if it's going to work. Uh, still saying it's generic. It's a string public vertex array of types. Maybe because it's of type vertex. Public vertex array of type string. And then here we want vertex array of type string cast it. So can we say... Uh, Can we cast it like this? Maybe vertex of type string to new object default capacity. Nope, doesn't like that. Oh, whoops! I need an array here. Uh, do we have an array up there for vertices? Yeah, so maybe an array here. Oh, did it work? will produce a cast. Oh, it's just, it's just doing the exact same thing. So it doesn't doesn't like the object array. Uh, I think. Let's say run. Damn, it was close. That's too bad. It was close. But it just didn't work. There probably is a way to do it. Is it working? Oh, no. Didn't work. It there, uh, didn't work. There's a class cast exception. Uh, there probably is a way to do it. Uh... Maybe if we change these up here to to uh, strings, perhaps, or we could change vertex of type string. Maybe I'm missing something here in this cast. It's not giving me any suggestions. New ob vertex array points to vertex of type string to new object. I've created object arrays before, so I'm not sure why this one doesn't work. I'm just gonna just gonna have a look in my textbook just to see if there's. Can't remember what chapter that was in. Uh, was that chapter eight? Uh, where did I have this polymorphism inheritance? I don't know if you remember the code, but it was the. Uh, the big company code, that one. There's an object array created in that. We did that example like a long time ago. If you're if you follow the if you're following all the Java videos, uh, here we go. It was a staff lift array of type staff lift 
a staff member object private so what do I have here uh, this up here is public vertex array of type string okay it might be because of the type parameter hmm, maybe that's it maybe so maybe we could just take that out type string Is that gonna work no so we could take vertex here and just say it's just vertex what's wrong with that oh I didn't want all that crap going there okay we'll just uh That's not the one, we'll close that. Vertex array, so then we don't need to cast it here. That can work. Yeah, that. Vertex array points to new vertex array of index default capacity. Will that work? Does it actually work? Is there a red line hiding under there? Okay, it seems to work. Uh, is there something wrong with that? I feel like this isn't, this isn't going to work properly. Three related. Ex okay, now it's not even saying what, it, what the problem is. It's not showing anything, so let's just see if it runs. I'm just trying to look in my textbook where they had the. Yeah, they said private staff member array. Private staff member array named staff list. Staff list. Staff list points to new staff member. So that that looks pretty. That looks fine. Uh, where's the staff member takes a string so this this might work so let's try it uh, we don't need vertex add vertex takes a string we're gonna store a string in the vertex that's what we want to do let me turn the brightness up okay let's say uh, we want to store us what are we doing here we want to store a string here then. And we want to store an object. You're right, we want to store a vertex vertex, that's what we want. That work. Uh, vertex named vertex. Vertex. Okay, so vertex takes a string. Uh, what's what's related problems? Instantiating a vertex doesn't need a parameter. I mean, a type in there, perhaps, because there's no type T. We'll try it. Like that's what the part of coding is just like trial and error, right? So it could take me a couple hours to figure this out. Hopefully it doesn't. So we'll try that. Then we'll change the graph class to. There was something we had to change here, wasn't there? Uh, takes a vertex. Uh, vertex itself. Nope, looks like it's fine now. So our vertex object itself holds a string val. Uh, then in our vertex array, we instantiate it to 5. It's of type vertex. Here we're going to add a vert. Uh, where's the overloaded one? This one's overloaded. Okay, so vertex, vertex takes a vertex object, name vertex, vertex array. 
of index num vertices points to the vertex. Okay, this might work. This might work. We'll try it out. Hopefully it does. We'll just run it first. Save and run, save and run. Oh, it did work, alright. And it's printing out null. That's not good. So here we'll say... Add vertex vertex A, it's storing the value. So we'll try to jump into that method. Alright, so let me just close my book. I got my book here sitting on me. I can't see these, the writing on, because I, so I have a big, uh, like, computer screen. I usually use my laptop for, to make videos. I can hear the fan noise when I use the mic, so I have to plug it into the big computer, like my desktop computer. And the screen's so big, I have to, like, lean in to see the, the memory locations. I can't see them very well. It's so small, it's just, like micro. I don't know why they, they did it so small. This one's like a 26 inch screen, but it's like you can't even see the the writing. Anyway, so we'll say uh, graph.addVertex. So we have our vertex A here. Memory location 953, that's good. It's holding the value A at some memory location. So we'll step in. Skip. Vertex array, are we storing? Vertex array, okay, so the, okay, we got a mistake here. We do have a mistake here. Vertices. No, we want to, no, is that right? Yeah, I think that is right. Because when we print, when we printed it out, we said print out graph. What a graph print last time. Vertices, right? We didn't print out the our new vertex array, so maybe it did work. So where are we here? Vertex array of type of oh, sorry of index array index uh, num vertices. So we're saying okay, well where is our debugger? Okay, so vertex array of array of array index zero so vertex where is our vertex array by the way here so here it says vertex objects there's five of them in our vertex array sort of memory location nine seven eight so we call the vertex array it's storing five vertex objects inside it's sort of memory location nine seven eight Alright, so hopefully this will work. So we'll say vertex array of array index 0 points to our vertex object here. Nay, uh, the vertex parameter object, which is memory location 953. They've laid that out up here, which is this one here, storing 953 memory location, vertex object named vertex, storing the value. Uh, storing the string a which is a value we've called it a value all right so we'll see if that works so we'll check our vertex array and index zero all right it works so now we have our index zero it's storing a okay so it is working it's going to set the adjacency matrix to False will increment num vertices by one, mod count by one. Okay, so it does work. All right, all right. So let's try to add one more. So we will add a uh, graph dot add vertex to we'll add vertex B. Okay, so what we're not doing is updating the edge. So that's what we need to do. So how do we how do we want to do this? Do we want to just store the values in the 
2D array, right? We can. That's what we. That's what we did. We're gonna add the edge here. These these methods may not actually work now because uh, it's taking an index. Actually, maybe we have to test them out. So we have one add edge. How many add edges do we have? One, two. Okay, just two. Okay, so it's taking an index. Uh, what index? Okay, so maybe we could. Okay, so it should work because our vertice. Uh, sorry, our new vertex array. What is it? What do we call it? We called it vertex array. So our new object vertex array. So this one stores objects, right? This one stored strings before. We wanted to store a string. This one stored strings. So our old code stored string objects. Or so it's, yeah, a string is an object. So let's just say it stored strings. This one, our new one, stores objects. Stores vertex objects, which store strings inside which store strings inside. So now when we compare, we're comparing the memory location. So where did we comp where do we compare anyways? Uh, with that get index method, right? Right, right, that's the one. So we want uh, this. Which one do we want? Advert, not, not that one. This one, add edge, get index. Okay, we, so, so can we add an edge between here? So let's scrap all this code. Well, okay, all the code is scrapped. False, false, false. Well, okay, it's all false. So we'll say here. We'll say graph dot add. So we want to add the edge here between the Vertex objects it takes a T vertex. I don't think that's going to work because we're going to have to change it to a vertex, vertex one, vertex, vertex two. Let's see if it does work this way, anyways. Oh, what's it called? It's called add edge v. Okay, add edge v. And we'll say it takes a vertex a and a vertex b. It might. Okay, it's not going to work until we change it. Required type string provided vertex. All right, so we have to change this. Uh, we're not changing it, are we? We're going to overload. Okay, let's overload. Let's just before we do that, let's say that this was overloaded, so you don't get confused. So take this, copy it. All software reuse, right? Then here we'll say vertex, vertex one, vertex, vertex two. It does work, hopefully. Nope, it wants uh, a T. Get index, uh, where is get index? Get index is down here. Okay, so let's first say that this one's overloaded. Get index, where are you down here? Uh, here we go. So let's take this whole thing and overload it. Software reuse, control C. Uh, then we'll say this, so we don't get confused, we'll say this is overloaded. Change this, take a vertex, vertex. Uh, okay. Suspicious call. Doesn't like that. This method, so we might have to change this method. We might not have time to do all that. But hopefully I can, we can see if this one will work. To add an edge. At least you get the idea now, what we're doing here. We're, we're comparing by memory location. We're storing objects now, actual objects. 
So we're in the add edge. This one. No, this one. Alright, so we'll try it now. It's saying it's suspicious, so we'll see if it actually works. Let's run it. Oh, no, I clicked the wrong one. Hopefully we don't get an exception, because it didn't like that built-in method. Uh, that's it did, Maybe the built-in method doesn't like our vertex object. The API. Okay, yeah, I think that's what happened. Well, what happened here? Null pointer at add index. So let's check that method. Add index. Or, sorry. Get index. Okay, here we go. Uh, get index. So this we have to change this one to... What was our array called? Vertex array. And then we'll have to change this one to vertex array too, probably. Alright, this might actually work. So we'll test it. Oh, sorry, let's run it first just to see if it worked. Oh, it did work. Okay, so... Oh, it did work. Alright, perfect. Uh, don't, don't worry about this because it's not printing. But you can see our adjacency matrix values got updated. So now where it looks like we're comparing by memory location, and I'll just finish off on this note here. Uh, that you can you can change the remove methods, because uh, unfortunately I don't have time to do that. But I've hopefully will help you step in the right direction here. So we'll just click the debug method. I mean, sorry, the the debug method. We'll click the debugger. It probably is a method. I think IntelliJ was made with Java. But anyways, we'll just uh, jump into this line here. And we'll say add edge. So we're calling add edge. We're passing in two vertexes, right? We're going to add edge at array. Uh, sorry, we're going to call this get. Does, hopefully it jumps into this method, by the way. Okay, it does. No, it does it. Oh, no, I don't think it did. Oh, it didn't. Because... Where, where did it, though? Because there's a place that it did. Oh, unfortunately, IntelliJ is not getting us to that method. Is there a four step into? Drop frame? No, that's not going to help. Dang, see, it's, it's skipping that method. See, look, I'm going to click the debugger, and it's gonna it's gonna skip that get index part. So we may have to edit something else because look, it's not it's saying add edge, but it's passing this parameter and not actually going into there. Four step into. Oh, it did work. Okay, perfect. Uh, click four step into to get into that method. So for int i is equal to 0, i is less than num vertices, i++. Plus plus. So i is going to be equal 0 on this iteration. Uh, so we'll say uh, if vertex array of index i. So this is our vertex array here. It's storing vertex custom objects that we created named vertexes. We could probably set it up to store T's somehow uh, with some cat proper casting and some technical stuff. But anyways, this way it works. So we'll say that our vertex array stores vertex objects, five of them, index zero to four. So we'll say that uh, If vertex array index 0, because i is equal to 0 at this time, excuse me, so we'll say uh, if vertex array of index i, so if vertex array, where's vertex array here? 
Nope. Nope. Is that it? Nope. Vertex. Okay, so we'll just click on this one. Well, we could click on this with this vertex. So this is our objects. Uh, this vertex array. Sort of memory location 976 this time. Storing vertex objects in five of them. We'll click on it. A vertex array of index zero. Because i is equal to zero this time. Dot equals vertex. What's vertex? Vertex is the vertex parameter, right? That's this one. Memory location 953, which is storing the value A. So have a look. In our vertex array, we have a, uh, an array index 0. We have a memory location 953 stored in there, so we have this vertex object stored in there and in that object it's holding a string so that object itself is holding a string object so if vertex array of index 0 which is memory location 9 I think it's going to compare by memory location here so 953 dot equals vertex which is memory location 953 if it's true it's, it shows, it'll step in and we've gone into Okay, so it does. So it is, so it looks like it does. It is uh, storing. It is comparing by memory location in this case, because there's nothing else. It else it could have it could have. Uh, there's no other. It has to be com compared by memory location. I think. Because think about it. What other way would it have compared? We, there is no other way. It's so where we can trick it up to see if it's the same one. Oh, sorry, if it does compare, if it doesn't compare by memory location, I'm pretty sure it does. I remember asking a long time ago on Stack Overflow. No one could answer me, and then one person was like, "Yeah, they they do compare by memory location." No one could understand what I was asking because I don't think they use a the debugger. But, uh, is there a way we can trick it up to check if it doesn't compare? I think we've done this before. But it looks like it does. So we'll say, we'll check, uh, get index. Get index is down here. So it doesn't compare by string anymore, it compares by memory location, I think. Okay, vertex array of index i. So here we're saying... There's probably a way, there's probably something we can do here, like we can say, maybe we can instantiate another vertex here, vertex, vertex, C, points a new vertex, storing the value, or the string C, which has a value, of course. So maybe we can add an edge between, so after we have that edge, we'll say, okay, no, let's, Let's step back here. Let's say before we after uh, before we add that edge, let's try to add a fake edge to see if it tricks it up. So we'll save that, run it to make sure it works. Actually, we don't need to. We already know that it probably works. Hopefully, you can. Oh no! What happened here? Array index out of bounds. We'll check why that happened, probably because I didn't like that it was adding a, a, a non-vertex. So we'll force step into. Non-vertices. Okay.
a vertex a vertex uh, and by the way we should have caught those exceptions and handled it if you were handing this in or doing something legit with it you'd want to handle those exceptions catch them and handle them excuse me to blow my nose so we'll uh so we'll step in here. We're saying if vertex array of index i, which is zero, dot equals the vertex which we've added, which is c. So basically, we're saying if the vertex array of index zero. I guess it's going to increment a few times. Okay, so it's not going to find it, right? It shouldn't because this is going to compare my memory location. So we're saying, okay, if, where's where's our vertex array here? Storing A and B, right? With no edge currently. Because we deleted that one, the last one, where we created an ed edge. So we'll say uh, if vertex or of array, if vertex array of index is zero, Uh, which is this one, 953 dot equals vertex, which is 955. That one should return false because it should be. So vertex 955, uh, memory location 955, is storing C. So if vertex array of index I, which is 0, is 953, which is storing A, equals vertex. So that's it shouldn't equal because they're different memory locations. Skip. So I will get incremented by 1. So it's only going to uh, iterate twice because it's less than num vertices, which is two. So it has to, i has to stay less than two. So if vertices, if vertex array of index i, which is one. So if vertex array of index one. Which is memory location nine five four is storing the value b or the string b dot equals vertex which is 955 storing the value c it should, it should skip it's not true then this should return negative 1 then here we had an exception as you can see because can I just I accidentally stepped over it sorry so step in step uh, no force no, no we don't need we already did that here we go if a JNC matrix of index one dot this here array of index out of bounds because it returned a negative one, right? So we should have handled this somehow to say that if uh, equals negative one, then return break out of it and just say that it wasn't able to add something like that. But anyways, I hope this clears up any confusion and you can fix those methods to change them if you're using this code. Uh, you can change the removes because we added a vertex. We have an add edge that works. We've changed this. So you can change this uh, this one yeah, that one works too, I think. So you can re you can uh, overload the remove remove vertex V, right? To take a vertex instead of type D. Then you can change all these to change you can change the arrays like we did. If you want to remove by vertex, it's going to check here if vertex of i equals, so it's going to compare by memory location. You can do that. We just did that, so it shouldn't be too hard. You just change t to vertex, right, uh, with a capital V, so vertex, vertex. That's a parameter with a capital V vertex, and we'll call it small vertex, lowercase vert v vertex. So t, change the t here to capital V vertex change this array to uh, how many do we have to do so yeah just change this array to uh, what do you call it uh, vertex array then change this one to vertex array that should work this one just takes an index you may have to just change the arrays here to vertex array vertex array here dot length 
this one removes all edges you can change that up as well uh, remove edge between two vertices do we do remove edge? no we, no, we just remove vertex okay so this one you can change as well you can change this to capital V vertex capital V vertex instead of T uh, you can then you can, yeah that's all you really need to do there this one should work fine without so the only thing is we're missing is the iterators and the uh, and the is connected so I've explained how to do it uh, I believe I'll leave you guys there and if I make another part I'll add it to this video so I'll see you guys next time and take care hope it helped